Welcome to ChemHelp ASAP. Our topic for this video is one of the fundamental purification methods, column chromatography. Column chromatography is a purification method and is based on differences in polarity between two molecules. The molecules may be solids or liquids, so you can purify just about anything in organ an organic chemistry lab with chromatography. You will need a stationary phase. Normally that's silica gel. It's essentially finely ground glass. And a mobile phase. Normally a relatively nonpolar solvent. When chromatography, while chromatography is very flexible in terms of what can be purified, it gets more difficult if you have more material. Chromatography also requires a lot of solvent lots and lots. Therefore, chromatography is normally used in a laboratory setting on smaller scales. When chemistry is performed on a larger scale, people try to rely on distillations and recrystallizations instead. Here is a very crude diagram of how chromatography works. It's much like a TLC plate, but it's much bigger. The stationary phase silica gel is loaded into a tube, the column. The impure material is placed onto the top of the stationary phase. The mobile phase then flows through the stationary phase, through the column, and out the bottom. It is then collected in tubes, in fractions. You'll have lots and lots of fractions. Compounds that are less polar tend to flow through the column faster because they have a higher affinity for the nonpolar mobile phase. Less polar compounds come out in the early fractions. More polar compounds stick to the polar silica gel, the stationary phase. They flow slower and come out in the later fractions. You can see what is in each fraction by running a TLC. Here on the left is an image of the TLC plate of an impure mixture. The two components are shown to the right. The top compound is less polar and it corresponds to the top spot. The bottom compound is more polar and it corresponds to the lower spot. When we put this mixture on the column, we'd expect for the less polar compound, the top one, to elute first, to come off the column first. The more polar compound will elute slower because it's more polar and it has a higher affinity for the more polar stationary phase. Okay, well here is our column. So this glass tube is our flash column and we have a valve at the bottom, a Teflon stopcock. We have in the very neck of this um, valve, we have a, a little bit of cotton, a cotton plug, and that keeps any solids from going out the bottom. We'll just have liquids going out the bottom. Then we have a layer of sand. We want that nice and even, and I've, I've already filled a little hexane in here. So here's our mobile phase ready to go. Now, we have to load this column. And to load the column, we're going to load it with silica gel. Silica gel is this white powder. It's what you find in shipping containers. Do not eat. So that's, uh, this is just fi very finely ground silica gel. And here is some of that same silica gel, and it's mixed with, it's mixed with hexane. You can see it becomes a little more translucent once it gets soaked in a solvent. So I'm going to swirl this around and try to really gently pour this in the top. This may be a little bit off camera, but I'm sort of pouring this into the top of this. Go a little faster than that. There, you can see some of the cloudiness. Great. Okay, good. That's good enough. We're not done, but that's a good start. Now, you can see this has gotten cloudy in here. That's gotten cloudy with the silica gel. We'll open this up. And we'll let this drip down. You can see there's kind of a fine cloudy layer. That is the solid silica gel floating down in the hexane. And then it'll get and it'll stop. And that is now our column. And I'll tap on this a little bit just to help that, that solid kind of settle in and pack. You want a nice uniform layer if at all possible. 
So, it's a little tedious. Tap, 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 tap. Okay, well that's good enough. Now, really, I want a little bit more silica gel than this. Maybe I want to fill it up to about here. I'm not going to try to run a really long column, but that's a good start. And now, I'll swirl this again. This is called a slurry when you get this uh, suspension of silica gel and your mobile phase, in my case hexane. And we'll dump some of this down. i got to pour a little faster. <laughs> okay, let's see what that did. I think that's going to be enough for for our demonstration purposes. There it goes, settling down, settling down. I think it's done. Okay, that's great. That's certainly enough for our purposes. And as I tap this, this is settled down just a little bit, meaning the level of silica gel is sort of settling deeper. Okay, that that is packing a column. So what we've done is we have gotten a bed of silica gel in here and this is the stationary phase through which we are going to pass our molecule and the mobile phase or our mixture and the mobile phase so let's uh let's just wait a little bit let this drip down i'm going to clean up there's a little bit of silica gel up here i'm going to rinse that down and then we'll be ready to um prepare our column to uh load our mixture on the column All right, so here we are. We have our column. It is fully loaded. All the solvent has dripped out, and we just have the, this is not wet silica gel, but it's uh, silica gel that is wet with hexane, not wet with water. Now, we need to load our compound onto here, and to do that, we just, uh, here's a vial that contains our mixture that we're going to separate. This is a little over 200 milligrams of material total. I want to be gentle with this. I don't want to splash this everywhere because there's not a whole lot of material. And we'll go gently into here and I will drip this directly onto the surface of the silica gel. Now since I have the stopcock closed, notice it's not dripping out the bottom. That's good. I want that to form a nice even layer there. And now let's open this up and the the volume of that mixture that I put on there is going to displace some of the hexane and push some hexane out the bottom. Now that's great. Now I'm going to rinse this flask out with a little bit of solvent and fortunately my material is soluble in hexane, but uh, both materials. And now we'll drip this rinse. Drip, drip, drip. And the key thing is we want to use as little solvent as possible. That way all of our material is like in this tight, what they call a band, on the column. Let's let that drip through. And you maybe can't see on the camera, but now there is, there is no standing liquid up here. Now, the, the column is now loaded, and, and we're ready to go uh, by putting mobile phase through here. There's one more thing I want to do. We want to keep the top of this column protected. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour a little bit of sand on top of this column. And because I'm, I'm going to pour liquid in the top, I don't want my liquid to go burrowing down into the silica gel, which means our, my compound would go everywhere. So put a little sand on there. That uh, creates a protective layer. So if I'm a little bit sloppy adding my solvent, and um, sometimes I am, then that sand will cover up some of the mistakes that I make. So there we go. We'll just pour that in. In fact, we'll put that whole thing in here. That's not much. That is straight hexane. And sometimes it's helpful to do a little tap, tap, tap. Sometimes you get some air bubbles in that sand, and that helps loop loosen up those bubbles. And now, man, that's exciting. We're getting ready to run this column. I'm going to slide this up a hair. And here are different test tubes. We're going to collect our solvent in fractions. And we can raise it up just a hair bit more. That's fine. And now we open it up. Ta-da! We are running a column. So now the solvent is flowing through our, um, through our silica gel bed, uh, through our stationary phase. And the molecules in our 
that have been absorbed on our stationary phase are now moving down the column. Um, I'm acting like they're racing down the column. They aren't. It's, it's pretty slow. But they are moving down the column. And each compound has a different affinity for our stationary phase. So presumably one of the compounds is going to go a little faster than the other. And we, we saw that on the TLC plate. One of the spots had a higher RF than the other. So here we are. We're, we're running the column. Now, how do we know if our stuff has come off? Because both of these compounds are clear uh, colorless or they're colorless solids. So what we'll have to do is we'll have to take TLCs of these different fractions. You can see the last this fraction is filled. So let's just slide this off and put on another. And there's fraction number one. This is part of the joy of running a column. You collect these fractions. This is one of the most tedious things that synthetic organic chemists do. There are automated machines that will help this go faster. You can also apply pressure. Right now this is called a gravity column because gravity is pulling the solvent, the, the mobile phase, through the stationary phase. You can apply more pressure to the top of your column. You can apply air pressure and that will cause the dripping to go faster, e even a lot faster. There are some factors to consider. You have maybe use different types of silica gel, but it, it's the exact same idea. You have a mobile phase passing through a stationary phase. Now, there's, for these two compounds, there's not a lot to watch because you can't see how they're moving. But we know from the TLC plate that they are moving at different paces on this column. So I'm going to take most of this off the camera, and I'm going to go ahead and continue adding solvent to the top and collecting the solvent in fractions off the bottom. And eventually, we'll take some TLCs and we'll see if our compounds have separated and if they have separated, which fractions um, each compound was collected in. The column has been dripping for a little while and I've uh, added fresh solvent. I've changed the concentration, the polarity of the mobile phase a little bit to increase the polarity to help slowly increase the rate at which the the materials uh, pass through the mobile phase and come off the bottom of the column. I've collected that's 10, 20, uh, you know, almost 30 fractions at this point. And I went ahead and took a TLC of the first 20 fractions. And once I change out this fraction, we can go ahead and take a look at that TLC plate. Okay, here is our TLC plate of the first 20 fractions. I didn't spot all 20 fractions. I did every other one. So this is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, and then 20. So what do we see? Well, this looks awesome. We have a top spot, our less polar molecule coming off in the earlier fractions. Once it finishes, the more polar material starts to loot in the later fractions. Based on this plate, I would guess the more polar material is still coming off the column. And I need to check some more fractions beyond fraction 20. The great thing is that we don't seem to have any overlapping fractions. Sometimes compounds do overlap. It happens. In other words, you don't get complete separation on the column. This is common. Sometimes purifications do not work well. Welcome to life as a chemist. Admittedly, I'm not 100% sure we got clean separation. Remember that I spotted every other fraction. I'm missing number 17 here. That fraction may have overlapping material. Still, this is a pretty good outcome. Without going back to the video of the column, I went ahead and took another TLC plate. The second plate has 22, 24, 26, 8, 30, and I think that's 32. It looks like the compound is done by fraction 32. You can see the trend clearly here. The less polar compound comes off first, and it's followed by the more polar compound. Each one of the fractions that shows a spot contains that material. So those early fractions contain the less polar compound, and the later fractions collectively contain the more polar compound. So this column is finished. I've stopped uh, passing solvent through it because we have evidence that 
our compounds have gone completely off of the column. Now, once you have your TLCs in hand, there's a huge sigh of relief. Things look separated. But the fact is, the work for a column is not done. Now, I'm not going to do anything else with this column. But the fact is, we now have our material dissolved in all these different fractions. So if we wanted to actually physically put our hands on that material, we would need to take the fractions, the numbers that indicated were contained material based on the TLC plates, and we would combine the liquid in these fractions, we put them in a round bottom flask, and then we would rotovap down that mixture that it would evaporate the solvent, and we would the residue would then be our purified material. I'm not going to go through those steps, but because really this video is about presenting the idea of doing column chromatography. And column chromatography is essentially a really large TLC plate where instead of getting seen analytical quantities of material, so you can make an assessment of purity or progress or re of a reaction, we're actually separating materials so we can get uh, isolate quantities of pure material through column chromatography. That is column chromatography. Molecules in a mixture are separated based on their polarity. It is time intensive, uses a ton of solvents, and is tedious at best to perform. You can purify solids and liquids. The process does require identification of a workable stationary phase, often silica gel, and a mobile phase, some nonpolar organic solvent. Chromatography does not scale well. You can do it on larger amounts of material, but the amount of solvent and silica gel both of which are expensive, can make it cost prohibitive. I hope this video helped you understand the ideas and techniques behind column chromatography. Please subscribe, like, or leave a comment. Take care.